Running low on groceries? Why not visit realvalueiga.com and experience our new online shopping platform. Place your order, then go out and enjoy your day to spend more time with friends and family. Delivery available within select locations or in store pickup available. Sounds simple, right? It is. Stress less, live more with Real Value IGA Online Store, where good food begins. We got the call on our way home that something was wrong. When we got here, we saw that the entire house was engulfed in flames. Just sitting there and looking at you, basically your whole life investment going up in flames. It did take a toll on us as a family. Once we decided to rebuild, the thought came up to use the Housing Authority of Grenada. After they sent in their quotation, which we thought was very, very reasonable, we decided to go with Housing Authority of Grenada. They were very helpful. They visited the site weekly. The staff was very professional. The contractor was very professional. They delivered our house on time. The quality of work was amazing and as you can see today, we are not disappointed. I would definitely recommend Housing Authority of Grenada for all your construction needs. With their affordable costs, high level of customer service, guidance, and building expertise, they will help you as they help us. Do you need to get one of these tests done? At an affordable price? Well, look no further. Visit Allied Laboratories by Fit for Life today. We offer 3DRL, CBC, ANA, Rheumatoid Factor, D Dimer, TROP1, HbA1c, PTINR, and PTT. Call one of our branches today, conveniently located at Grenville and Granat, and one of our staff members will be happy to assist. Please note that there are over 200 tests available, and these are only a few. So call today and book your appointment. We support you at every stage of your life. For business. For your education. For your financial freedom. For that new ride. Upgrade your life with the communal. Contact us today. All righty, all righty, we'd like to officially welcome one and all to another Mikey Live program. I am your host, Mikey Hutchinson, and yes, we are coming to you live from the spice island of the Caribbean, Grenada. It is Friday, thank God it is Friday, and of course, there's no better place to be than right here, right now. This is it. We're talking about the good, we're talking about the bad, we're talking about the Mikey. Well, you know, on Fridays, we, we try to not keep it too long, and I mean... Yeah, we, we, we try to not keep it along in the business. So all yeah, brace all yourself. You know, I know it's Friday, you might want to go and hang out by the bar or something, you know, after the program and thing. So let's talk. First female Queen's uh, uh, Council, Mrs. Uh, Celia, Miss, Miss Klein. You know, um, we all know her. Some call her Miss Klein, Celia, uh, Miss Edwards. However, you know her. She passed away, boy. Yeah, boy. Anyway, we'll talk about her a little bit later on. As well, um, police officers injured in protest. We'll talk about that. And the SU, um, you know, one of the students, former, made a nice little something donation and thing of some smart devices and so on to the hospital. Much needed. You know, so we'll talk about that. Father! And mother of Kimon Bell were part of the protest today. And their focus was on justice. 
for their son. We will also talk to police, the deputy commissioner of police, so tough for our pair. We have a lot of things to tell all about on the program, but again, we don't take it, we don't stay long on the program. So let's take that quick break and come back. We have to remind you that the headlines was brought to you through the kind compliments of Quotes, Grenada Limited, Digicel, Nawasa, the Housing Authority of Grenada, Real Value, IGA Supermarket, and uh, um, the Nice Superb, and all the other sponsors. We want to say thank you for being on board with us, man. You know, and uh, we appreciate you. We're coming back. When we come back, it could be real news in all the little, little, And here's what Shady, yo, listen, Shady Tingle Man, where's that one dog? Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store now has amazing deals, special discounted prices on wedding sets, watches and selected jewelry. We sell top brand jewelry and watches like Citizen, Guess and Klein and G-Shock all at the best prices in Grenada. We also buy scrap gold and offer the best deals and customer service on the island. Opening hours Mondays to Saturdays 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store located at the Esplanade Mall, St. George's, Grenada. Visit our brand new remodeled store or call us on telephone number 414-3114-232-1234 or WhatsApp 533-1581. Sale is on for a limited time only. only. Rich, smooth, delicious, and packed with vitamins, that could only be one thing. It's a Rika Almond Beverage. Great on its own are a lovely addition to smoothies. So call Superb Distributors on 435-2948 or visit us at Tempe St. George's today. Remember, Rika is life and life is Rika. The Nawasa app brings the power of Nawasa's customer service experience to you. Instant, conversational, and smart. Easy access anywhere. Get bill balance, transaction history for up to six months, report a fault, link to websites, view payment centers, contact information, push notifications, and multi-tenant accounts all in a secure login platform. Like a self-service concierge app, mobile.nawasa.gd gets you the support you need much faster. Available on both Android and iOS platforms. Mobile.nawasa.gd, your customer support companion. Nawasa, committed to meeting customers' needs. All righty, thank you and welcome. And of course, yeah, boy, the first thing that we have to tell you about, well, the Rotary Club, you know, um, they too sent out, um, you know, a little condolence message, you know, as, as, as uh, and Klein was also a part of their organization, you know. Um, we also heard from the Prime Minister, you know, a lot of tributes, a lot of tributes, you know, he said that he wanted to extend condolence to the family and friends and our colleagues, all right, and as well, um, the, um, the Legal Affairs Minister, in fact, the Ministry of Legal Affairs sent out notice, you know, um, it says that the Ministry of Legal Affairs, the Attorney General's Chamber and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution joins in mourning uh, today with the legal fraternity, family and friends of uh, Celia Klein Edwards, Queen's Counsel, who died on Thursday. Mrs. Edwards QC was a veteran litigator and leaves behind a great legacy, being the first female Queen's Counsel to, of Grenada, as uh, she was uh, deservedly elevated to the rank of um, silk, and that was back in uh, in 2008, uh, 2008. She was Grenada's, also Grenada's first female island scholar. You understand? A former chairperson of the Public Service Commission, the Land Development uh, Control Authority, and the president of the Rotary Club of Grenada. At the time of her passing, she was the uh, representative for the Ottawa. All right, on the, on the, on the, the general legal counsel. I mean, you know, so, yeah, no ordinary person, you know, no ordinary person. So she passed away, I mean, yeah, anyway. You know, we all have to travel that road someday. I see it every day, you know what I mean? Okay, let's move on. Now, during the, the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Grenada COVID-19 Crisis Group, the GCCG, led by SU graduates, uh, Michelle Friday, MD 88, uh, Dwight 
uh, Matthias, MD 92, and uh, Lisa Radix, MD 97, and uh, spearheaded a, they, they spearheaded a campaign facilitating in uh, person and online patient care and uh, also crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing sorry, both funds and the supplies that will be um, used to help the healthcare workers on the ground treat uh, those who they, um, they, you know, came in contact with, particularly those who contracted the virus. So there's a Canadian born boy, alumnus, Dr. Dwight Mathias. He was raised, they say, in Belmont, St. George. He re recently returned to Grenada, Grenada. And guess what? Donated laptops and iPads to the General Hospital, you know. Let me see if I got like a piece of thing on the business. Look it here on the business. Hold on, let me show up the thing on the business. You understand? When good things happen, we have to tell all you. Yeah, so much uh, all kind of thing happening in the place. So yes, we have to tell all of the good news too. Now, as part of his ongoing commitment, they say to improve healthcare in Grenada. You understand? He say they say he was proud and really happy, you know, to to organize this. You understand? And so we have to say thank you because all of us, all of we go benefit from the business. You understand? So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now they are saying here that uh, uh, graduate contributions in, in grad, graduate uh, contributions, sorry, in collaboration with health officials in Grenada continue to be a part of a greater effort from the entire SGU community, said uh, uh, Brendan Lagranade, is a vice uh, provost to St. George's University. He says, any input I can provide through education equipment, offering services and hosting workshops, I believe will be very beneficial to, to advancing diabetes care on the island. That was now Dr. Matthias. You understand? They say that they are passionate, you know, when it comes to giving back things. And so, yeah, boy, you know. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. Folks, Today was no ordinary day in the country, you know, um, as family members and friends responded to the situation that led to the death of a young man, only 22 years old, Come on, Bell died on Sunday, but we don't know exactly when he died, how long he stayed in the water before he, he you know, he eventually passed away, or we know his body was recovered several hours later, which is in the following day, by divers attached to the Coast Guard. You know, according to um, Bell's friend, who was on the boat at the time, they were on the boat and noticed uh, uh, the, the Coast Guard approaching them. And uh, they kind of like waved the light to draw attention to the Coast Guard so that they would realize that they're in the water there. But that didn't stop the Coast Guard from running right into them, claiming the life of Bell, her family and friends and so on, they organized a protest. And they say they want justice. You understand? So they headed up to the botanical gardens this morning. Of course, there they met police officers, um, SSU and, and, and so on. But that didn't stop them from protesting. The father, a lot of all you know him as Smiller says that all he wants is justice for his son. Well, we're out here today to tell the authority the police are responsible for killing my son had to be brought to justice. They had to be arrested and charged and I wouldn't stop until I get justice. That's all I need is justice. Well, it's impossible because when police investigating police in Grenada, they never ever come up with nothing positive for the family. They always covering up. So calling on the authority, the Governor General and Dr. Keith Mitchell, please, I need justice. I need it. That's all I have to say. That's such a passionate plea for justice. The mother of Kimon Bell as well was there and she too joined in the call for justice for her son. She says her son isn't a nobody and wants answers. I am looking for justice for my son and I want the person that murdered my child and the three men on the Coast Guard base, they're supposed to be not on duty and they're on duty. They're on duty. And please ask the commissioner, do not come back in front of my house. 
don't come back in front of me and my family. I'm really upset. Because yesterday he come and he upset my spirit. Tell him I say, don't come back. He ain't going down so. There are custom killing people children. But my child her owner. I ain't going down so. He's not a nobody. Police can investigate police. Police can investigate police. Well, of course, they are saying that they do not have confidence um, in the fact that uh, there are also police officers involved in the um, investigation of this particular matter. There are also some friends who are who are there and they too said they, that they are there as part of the protest so that they can um, get some sort of uh, justice for uh, Kimon Bell. This is because I'm my best friend, our brothers and sisters, he has sisters just the same way and he have a father and the people who are born the boat, they have family too and that's unfair because you know, we don't live in peacefully then because Every day, we as youths, man, we, we grew up in the wrong environment. We don't have jobs. So it's obvious we're going to look to make it somehow. And that's really unfair. We can't understand how the Coast Guard could see a small boat. But don't, don't see a small boat and run over it. That don't make any sense. Because the Coast Guard are radar, the Coast Guard are light, the Coast Guard are everything on it. So that, that don't even make any sense. You can't cover up nothing because we tired that we want justice. I'm a best friend and you want me to see a young man as me go down just so for nothing. I a boatman too. I a boatman too, you understand? And them boat they fully equipped. And I a man that's got 200, 300 miles to check. And I ride there. You understand? And when I do outside there, I look for a big boat. This man and them are fully equipped. They are back on the reader, they are everything. They are everything to see what in front of them. They don't have no reason to say they could knock on a small boat in front of them right there and tell them what they don't see it. They lie. They actually have a personal warfare with the youth man and them. And let's try to get rid of them youth man and them. A personal warfare. And right now my mind can't think straight because I'm a brother seen every day I can't see me again. What horror am I think? Peace we want right now. And if we don't get rid of this man and them, don't worry. All uh, right, and on commenting uh, or in commenting on uh, today's events, um, we've got uh, Tafa Wape, who's the Deputy Commissioner of Police, and he too joined in the, the call for calm and understanding, and he assures the general public that a thorough investigation will be done as it relates to that particular matter. Yeah, but I, as, as you, I want to tell you what happened. As you see, there has been a protest, and let me just say that the police is not against protests. We believe that's a, a constitutional right for people to gather and, and, and show their displeasure about whatever issue there is. So we have no issue with people gathering and protesting. I think everybody should be concerned about a gathering or a protest that turns out to be a mob or turns out to be angry and turns out to be destructive and disrespectful. So our role really is not necessarily to try to thwart protests, but what we are attempting to do is what is the lifeblood of any um, police organization is to protect life and property, um, to ensure that persons who are not part of the protest or even the protesters themselves are safe and they can function in a safe environment. All right? Of course, we have a responsibility to protect dignitaries and indeed um, protect government buildings and so on. So that's what we are actually doing. We are not trying to say that protest should not happen. Now, with respect to the incident, we understand and we accept the fact that emotions would be running high. Uh, the commissioner, the executive, the entire organ of the police force sympathizes with the mother, father and family of the deceased. We understand how that feels. If you lose anyone, you know how difficult it is to lose someone. And so what we want to make clear is that there would be a are on the way formal investigations. And I said do, because based on the law, based on the Shipping Act, the Maritime Authority, once there is any accident or damage at sea, has a responsibility to conduct their own investigation. So having said that, the police force also has a responsibility to investigate any sudden death or any serious accident. For now, we call it an incident because you have an incident, you carry out an investigation, 
and then you determine the results of the investigation and then after that you will determine how to categorize the incident. So these two investigations are on the way if you realize that we, a press release um, was circulated yesterday and the commissioner reiterated that in addition to the police doing the parallel investigation with the Maritime Authority, we're also inviting experts from the RSS um, region to assist and to give direction, particularly with respect to the, 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 the intricacies of, of incidents at sea. So I, I think it's important to stress the, 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 the value of transparency that we are encouraging both on the maritime side and also on our own side. Um, we know that emotions are running high. What we are saying, let the investigations continue and be completed. And then after that, we will determine which direction to go. And I must add also that whatever happens after the investigation is determined by the Director of Public Prosecution. That is where the documentation, the files, the statements that are taken, the reports that are written would go. And he, as the ultimate authority, would decide how to categorize the incident, whether to categorize it as a crime or an accident. I don't want to go further in terms of what his role is, because of course that, that is his role. But what the police want to reiterate that this scenario is difficult, but we are ensuring that we conduct an investigation that can actually stand the test of time. And people must be reassured that we would investigate and sure that it's done in a fair environment and the results would be made public. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Commissioner of Police Tafa Wape. Several police officers were injured in today's protest. In fact, there was one point where um, a, a police officer ended up in a, a small scuffle with one of the protesters. When asked about this, um, the Deputy Commissioner of Police said that though there were some minor, as he categorized it, um, incidents, that, doesn't, that really doesn't define what the environment was like today. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it wasn't a violent protest. I mean, um, based on the incident, tempers run high and you, you have sporadic um, issues. But I, I, I won't call it a violent um, protest. Um, neither was it extremely peaceful, but I think it was manageable. Uh, and we understand how people respond and the police respond likewise. If you realize the police has a, has a posture that says that we, 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 we want you to protest, but we don't want you to breach certain aspects of the law. But there was a, a say, sporadic incident with a, a police officer who got wet in the process and a little bit of tugging and pulling. A couple of police officers got some minor injuries. Um, but it's, it wasn't the entire protest that led to that. You had individual um, activity taking place outside of maybe what the protest was really about. So I don't want to categorize as violent and whatever happened would have been individual um, sporadic incidents on the side. And that was the Deputy Commissioner of Police, Tafa Wape. Now the family are saying that they will not be stopping unless they get justice. Unless justice is served, they will not be stopping. So what does that mean? We are not entirely sure. Does it mean that they will be going back um, to the Botanical Gardens to continue protesting on another day? Or uh, does that mean that they will be uh, turning their protest into, into something um, different, maybe uh, going onto social media or going into different areas and so on? Exactly, we do not know. So um, this is one um, that we will have to continue to, to monitor. It's a very interesting uh, development so far. And, um, well, well, today was very, very interesting. By the way, um, uh, I, I could not be there um, myself. I attempted to, but uh, something happened and there was a, a stall in the traffic. You know, there was a stall in the traffic. And, and, and so I was in the traffic for a little while. And then there was an in, uh, incident involving the drone that we were um, uh, sending up to go get the, the footage. A vehicle passed on the drone. Yes, and destroyed it. So we were not able to, to, um, to get that footage either. Yeah, uh, so it was a rather disappointing day for me um, in that regard because, um, yeah, you know, drones don't come easy. So anyway, um, that's that. Uh, but again, um, there were highs and lows um, at today's event. The highs that the family were able to get their voices heard um, and uh, some of the friends and, and, and villagers and so on got their voices heard. 
the losses that there were a few little scuffles probably on both sides would have preferred not happen because at the end of the day you understand um, the emotions involved in this in this particular um, situation where someone has died yes someone has died a young man has died only 22 years old and you would understand how that makes uh some people feel yeah so that's that's that's, that's, that's what it is so we have to understand um things on all all sides you know what i mean yes good and uh, of course we always promise that we don't keep you very long on fridays and we do not intend to do so today either what we're going to do right now is uh, we are going to take a quick break and come back and when we come back we will have for you the national report and the weather all right so hang on there we will be back running low on groceries why not visit realvalueiga.com and experience our new online shopping platform place your order then go out and enjoy your day to spend more time with friends and family delivery available within select locations or in store pickup available sounds simple right it is stress less live more with real value iga online store where good food begins we got the call on our way home that something was wrong when we got here we saw that the entire house was engulfed in flames just sitting there and looking at you basically your whole life investment going up in flames it did take a toll on us as a family. Once we decided to rebuild, the thought came up to use the Housing Authority of Grenada. After they sent in their quotation, which we thought was very, very reasonable, we decided to go with Housing Authority of Grenada. They were very helpful. They visited the site weekly. The staff was very professional. The contractor was very professional. They delivered our house on time. The quality of work was amazing and as you can see today, we are not disappointed. I would definitely recommend Housing Authority of Grenada for all your construction needs. With their affordable costs, high level of customer service, guidance and building expertise, they will help you as they help us. We support you at every stage of your life. For business. For your education. For your financial freedom. For that new ride. Upgrade your life with the communal. Contact us today. Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store now has amazing deals, special discounted prices on wedding sets, watches and selected jewelry. We sell top brand jewelry and watches like Citizen, Guess and Klein and G-Shock all at the best prices in Grenada. We also buy scrap gold and offer the best deals and customer service on the island. Opening hours Mondays to Saturdays 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store Located at the Esplanade Mall, St. George's, Grenada. Visit our brand new remodeled store or call us on telephone number 414-3114-232-1234 or WhatsApp 533-1581. Sale is on for a limited time only. only. Rich, smooth, delicious and packed with vitamins, that could only be one thing. It's a Rika Almond Beverage. Great on its own are a lovely addition to smoothies. So call Superb Distributors on 435-2948 or visit us at Tempe St. George's today. Remember, Rika is life and life is Rika. 
collect, share, and win with Coca-Cola. Here's your chance to win one of three Sony PlayStation 5 consoles when you enjoy original Coca-Cola or Coca-Cola No Sugar. Collect specially marked labels and spell the word magic. Submit the labels in an envelope with your name, address, and contact information and drop in entry boxes provided at major supermarkets. 22 lucky winners can also win great weekly prizes including Samsung Smart TVs, Samsung Mobile Phones, Samsung Tablets, and free Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, real magic. See press or online for more details. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome to Yogo. Most of you know us for our food delivery service and our food pass for free delivery from restaurants. But did you know you can also use us for grocery deliveries too? We've just added another 5,000 plus new items to Yogo Supermarket and stay updated as we add more products and vendors. Yogo Services is our convenient skip the line offering. Let us pay your electric, water, and other utility bills for you. With us, you will be able to buy tickets, pay your rent, schedule bookings, and other services. Need a ride to get somewhere? Give Yogo Lyft a try. Select your pickup location and destination location and wait for our driver to collect you. Never have to worry about how you're going to get to a place again. Please see website or app for our service locations. And sign up now. What does it take to be an amazing woman? Lots of me time. Amazing women are classy, fancy, and a little sassy. It's the drink for me. Cheers. Sometimes you've got to show them who's boss. Alpha male? Nah, alpha females are more amazing. Cheers to secure in the bag. We make time for ourselves, for work, friends, and we certainly make time for passion. We're simply amazing. Amazing cream liqueur for the amazing woman in you. The Nawasa app brings the power of Nawasa's customer service experience to you. Instant, conversational, and smart. Easy access anywhere. Get bill balance, transaction history for up to six months, report a fault, link to websites, view payment centers, contact information, push notifications, and multi-tenant accounts all in a secure login platform. Like a self-service concierge app, mobile.nawasa.gd gets you the support you need much faster. Available on both Android and iOS platforms. Mobile.nawasa.gd, your customer support companion. Nawasa, committed to meeting customers' needs. Minister appeals the business community to work with government to help alleviate financial burden on the population. We'll have details of this story and more in the National Report. Welcome back. With the details to the news for Friday, April 29, 2022, I am Sherry Ann Noel. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell is calling on the business community to collaborate with government to roll out measures that will help to alleviate the financial burden on the population, particularly as it relates to the price of food items. Dr. Mitchell says rising food prices are not unique to Grenada and attributed the country's ability to develop a buffer and endure so far to the government's prudent fiscal management in preceding years. Dr. Mitchell told a gathering at the Trade Center Annex during his national address on Tuesday that with the economy on the road to recovery, government will continue to examine ways to alleviate the financial burden on the population. In the past few months, our economy has continued along the road to recovery. But we are still not seeing the pre-pandemic numbers yet. 
Government's response to the pandemic necessitated additional expenditure, and even now, expenditure continues to rise. Additionally, Grenada, like all other countries around the world, continue to experience inflationary pressure on imported goods and services because of dreaded war in Europe. In the 2022 budget, government started to address this challenge by introducing a number of cost of living measures. But we have continued to examine ways in which we can further alleviate the financial burden on the population, particularly as it relates to food items. Prime Minister Mitchell encouraged more Grenadians to get involved in agriculture to boost food production and lessen the country's food import bill. Government continues its efforts to mitigate the impact of rising food prices. And therefore, we must embrace the opportunity to boost food production and become less dependent on imports and to improve our country's food security. We must focus more on growing what we eat and eating what we grow. Moving along, the Ministry of Legal Affairs, the Attorney General's Chambers, and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution joined in mourning with the legal fraternity, family, and friends of Celia Klein Edwards, Queen's Counsel, who died on Thursday. Mrs. Edwards QC was a veteran litigator and leaves behind a great legacy, being the first female Queen's Council of Grenada, as she was deservingly elevated to the rank of Silk in 2008. She was also Grenada's first female island scholar, a former chairperson of the Public Service Commission, the Land Development Control Authority, and president of the Rotary Club of Grenada. At the time of her passing, she was a representative for the Utter Bar on the General Legal Council. Mrs. Edwards willingly aided many in her professional and personal capacity throughout her life. In celebrating the life and contributions made to, the, to Grenada by Mrs. Edwards, the Ministry of Legal Affairs extends sincere condolences to her family, her friends, the staff at the law office of George E.D. Klein, and the legal fraternity. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell on Friday extended condolences to the family, friends, and colleagues of the late Celia Klein Edwards, Queen's Counsel. According to Dr. Mitchell, Mrs. Klein Edwards distinguished herself as part of the legal fraternity and went above and beyond in fighting for her clients. Her passing, he said, represents a tremendous loss to the legal profession in Grenada. Moving along, Grenadians residing in the diaspora continue to make their contributions to ensure that the health sector is equipped to deal with any crisis or situation. Grenadian entrepreneur Erlin Williams, who resides in the United States, recently donated medical supplies, equipment, and medication to the Guelph Medical Station. Williams said she spearheaded the campaign to pool the supplies with assistance on Grenadians in the U.S. The donation includes bedpans, adult diapers, medication, test kits, gloves, ventilator, and clutches. She pledged to continue to give support to any sector in need. When I came, like I think a year or two before COVID, and I saw you know the building. I was compelled to give back and to ask for help. So some of my friends in New York, I asked for a donation who works in hospital, you know, to donate, to give back, because it's a community thing and we have to give back. It's not just for one person, it's for everybody. This would not be a one-off. I will be continue to give back um, as I go back, um, continue to bring stuff down, whatever they need, you know, in sort of band-aids, things that, you know, they might, you know, for the babies you need and for the different departments. I will ask for help, like sheets and all that. I will try to get some of those things as well to donate and give back. These supplies were handed over to Suzelle Ned, senior nurse at the Guelph Medical Station, in the presence of Parliamentary Representative Honorable Alvin Dabriel. Both expressed gratitude for the donation and encouraged more support in the future. We really appreciate it, your kind gesture, and it's nice to see you can give back to your community. That's a good initiative, and we hope that others may follow. Whatever you have given to us, we will put it into good use, and it will be for the benefit of the people that we serve. Well, we are very grateful for, for it, and uh, we know it takes, it takes a lot to do that. And uh, just in addition to the effort, just the fact that you see it in your heart, 
to make a contribution to the, the welfare of your people says a lot. So we're thankful and we're grateful to you and we don't hope it will stop there. <laughs> we want to ask you to continue your good works and uh, I know it's not the first time you've been doing that because you have uh, supplied us with uh, things like bed sheets already and the home in Guav and other places has benefited that tremendously and even the hospital in Grenada has benefited that through the things that you send through the Grenada mission in New York. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. Prices rising. Customers are screaming, wondering how they can stretch their dollar. Can their central banks improve their buying power? Your central bank weighs in on the next Caribbean Economic Forum entitled, How Can Central Banks Fight Inflation? Our guests from Barbados, Mr. Clavis Haynes, Governor of the Central Bank of Barbados. From Jamaica, Mr. Richard Biles, Governor of the Bank of Jamaica. And Caribbean economist and economic advisor, Ms. Marla Ducaran. I'm your host, Tony Thorne. Join the Caribbean Economic Forum on Thursday, May the 5th at 8 p.m. Barbados time, 7 p.m. Jamaica time to learn how we can deal with inflation. Don't miss it. Welcome back. Having a strong occupational safety and health system is crucial in protecting working environments and safeguarding the safety and health of workers. In recognition of World Day for International Day of Health and Safety at work, on Thursday, Minister for Labour Honorable Peter David, along with a team from the Ministry of Labour, visited the Grenada Marine to assess safety standards and procedures there. Our responsibility is to, is to, is to from time to time, make visits to workplaces to ensure that these safety, safety measures are kept in place. I was impressed here at the uh, marina, uh, the, the Grenada Marina, where uh, Jason and, and, and his team are doing great work in the, the yachting sector, particularly with respect to the service of, of yachts. Um, we, we looked at how the yacht was taken off, the water, how it was placed in the, in the marina, and the measures that are used in order to ensure that workers are safe. And as you know, these jobs can be quite precarious sometimes. It's, it's their hazards, in the, be it in the painting, in the lifting off of the water. There are several parts and, 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 and areas of this kind of work that can be quite dangerous. So uh, we looked at it and we are satisfied that the company is doing uh, what, it, what it needs to in order to make sure safety. Grenada Marine is a one-stop shop boat yard located on the southeast coast of the island, occupying 10 acres of beachfront that embraces the well-protected and safe harbour of St. David. Part owner Jason Fletcher spoke to the implementation of health and safety standard. It's a matter of consciousness and, and awareness and constant reminding and reassuring. We have a meeting, a staff meeting every month, and built into that meeting is invariably there's a mention of a safety concern, of a safety issue, somebody might have seen something and they say, guys, you know, right? So it is ever present, always present, you know? and the way to avoid it is to remain conscious. I'm Pam Lenzion, and I'm a consultant working acting uh, as a general manager here. And we're about to get ready next week for hurricane season. So, not that anybody wants to talk about it or hear about it, but we have a, a, an insurance approved program for anchoring boats. And so they, so so we anchor the boats and tie them down uh, according to the standard so that we know that they won't lift and blow over in a wind. Now, with the last hurricane, when so many boats were lost, only one boat was lost. So we have a very good program. The International Labor Organization, ILO, began observing the day to stress the importance of preventing accidents and the spread of disease at work, capitalizing on the ILO, ILO's traditional strengths of tripartism and social dialogue. Kim on Boris, rigor of at the marina explain some of the procedures in place to ensure that both himself and colleagues are safe. It all depends on like a rainy day we make sure that everybody has their coveralls and boots, you know, with the COVID we had the mask, we had our sanitizing station and everything. 
architecture. It all deals because you know we do a lot of different things in the mining industry. Bottom painting, top painting, side glassing, the rigging, the sales. So it's very, it's a broad horizon to cover. The celebration is an integral part of the strategy on occupational safety and health of the Ministry of Labor to raise awareness of how to make work safe and healthy. Following his visit to the marina, David said he was very pleased with the standards enforced. And finally in the news, Edward Gordon Williams is one of two Grenadians certified as master trainers after participating in the UNESCO and Blackboard Collaborate sponsor course held in 2020. Blackboard Collaborate is an online learning platform. The focus of the training, which came as a result of COVID-19, was to provide 40 master trainers in the Caribbean with the skills necessary to in turn train teachers on the best ways to deliver blended and online classes to their students. Williams was among those presented with a device for his participation. He said they have trained over 12,000 educators in the region so far. More than was catered for at the beginning. The teachers really enjoyed it. They really learned a lot and they, um, the testimony you know, really um, showed that they really appreciate that kind of practical um, aspect of the course where you're able to convert that face-to-face -face learning to the blended or online approach. So give me an example of something you would teach them to do that would be tough for them to do online. Um, for instance, experiments. Um, it is kind of difficult to do it online, but what we encourage, as we would have let the teachers um, understand, is that um, you're going to use, let them children use videos, so you're going to video them, give them the instructions, as same as you give in the classroom, and with the help of the parent or an adult, that they would carry the experiment, but they would videotape the experiment and send that video to the teachers so that they can have an appreciation and see what was done and who really did the experiment. The master trainers can train teachers from grades K to 12. 12. The six months course ran from August 2020 to December 2020. And with that story, we come to the end of the National Report for Friday, April 29, 2022. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sharia Noel, thanking you for viewing. All right, thank you very much, uh, Sherry Ann, and uh, the rest of the uh, GIS news team. And uh, at this point in time, we take a, a look at the weather. And of course, the weather is uh, submitted by the Med Office. All right, so what we can tell you is that the weather for tonight is expected to be partly cloudy and hazy with brief light isolated showers. The minimum temperature for tonight, 24.5 degrees Celsius. Winds east northeasterly to east southeasterly at 12 to 22 miles per hour. Seas are moderate with waves up to 7 feet in open waters. A small craft advisory remains in effect. And for Saturday, we can tell you the weather is expected to be partly cloudy, hazy and windy with brief isolated showers improving at the daytime, as the daytime progresses. Maximum temperature 30 degrees Celsius, minimum 24 Winds easterly to southeasterly at 13 to 23 miles per hour, gusting higher at times. Sea is moderate with waves near 7 feet in open waters. A small craft advisory remains in effect. Taking a look at Sunday, what we can tell you is that the weather is expected to be mostly fair and windy, becoming partly cloudy at times with a medium chance of few brief morning and nighttime showers. Now the maximum temperature for Sunday 31 degrees Celsius and a minimum 24.5. Winds easterly to southeasterly at 4 to 24 miles per hour gusting higher at times. Seas moderate to slightly rough with waves up to 7 feet in open waters. A small craft advisory would also be in effect for Sunday. And uh, before we go, let's say hello to the folks who are currently on um, YouTube. Uh, the YouTube viewers, Ezra and... Um, Glenora, Calvin, Ezran, and uh, Cleopatra, my mom, and the whole crew. Um, it's Clovey. How are you? Thank you for watching. Blessings to you. And as well, um, everyone else on YouTube. Those of you on Facebook, like Gloria and Rolanda and Velma, 
Um, I'd like to say hello to you, my mom, my sister, Lynn Turner, and the rest of the family is always on. Meryl, Mr. McQueen, hello to you, Zaka, Cynthia, Kirin, and Eunice. We want to say hello to you guys as well. And to those of you who, you're usually there, but you say nothing. I meet you on, the, on a day-to-day -day basis on the street. You say hi, hello to you. Um, to Carol, uh, I see that you're there. Uh, blessings to you as, as well, Pearl and Ansha. Um, blessings to you as well, Ansha, all right? And I mean, Liz is there with us tonight in praise and worship. So we too need to say hello to you guys, all right? Blessings to you as well. And Yvonne and Desiree, uh, blessings to you. Timron, I see that you're there as well. All right, so bless up Vicky um, there as well. So folks, all the best to you. We want to encourage you to have yourself a great weekend. Yes, may God bless you and your family. All right, are you ready? Let's go. We're doing this in five, four, three, two, hi, Surana, one. We all say, ja, no. Take care. Have a great weekend. God bless you.